Hi and welcome to the first of a really exciting collaboration between us at Care Visions and the British Library. We are delighted to be able to share with you some of the treasures from this wonderful library by taking you on a journey around Britain's coastline. As we go along you'll hear many different sounds that come from the British Library's fantastic archive. So my name is Laura and I'm going to be your guide today. I'm a qualified music therapist and I've been working in healthcare for many years now and I'm currently working as a therapist for Care Visions. Now this session can be used alone but it might also be beneficial for it to be used with caregivers, friends or family members. It's most suitable for people who are living with early to moderate stage dementia but it could also be used with support with people who are living with later stage dementia as well. So as we journey around Britain's coastline today, we'll meet many different characters, we'll hear some wonderful sounds and we can try some activities that might bring back some memories, help our language skills, encourage our focus and attention and we'll be ending with some beautiful relaxation. Now you might like to have a notepad and pen beside you to write down any answers to questions as we go along and perhaps also turn the volume up or use headphones to make sure you can appreciate all the wonderful sounds in this video. So if you've just joined us, welcome to Care Visions Activity Session in collaboration with the British Library. Together we'll see some beautiful imagery, listen to sounds from the British Library Archive and then we can try some activities based on the features of Great Britain's coastline. You can pause the video at any time if you'd like a little bit extra time to write down the answers to questions or if you'd like to discuss the video content with somebody. Also the video can be stopped and re-watched as many times as you need or wish to. So let's get started. So people in Great Britain have been going on holiday to towns on the coast of this country for hundreds of years now and right from the Victorian era up until the middle of the 20th century these types of holidays were really popular in this country. So when summer bank holidays were introduced and more and more people were using the railways to travel, seaside towns like Blackpool, Clondudno and Brighton became major holiday destinations in the UK. Did you ever go to the seaside on a holiday? Where did you go to? Well, where people chose to visit often depended on where they lived. So if you lived in the north of Britain, you might go to Blackpool, which is where I often went to on holiday with my family. But if you lived further south, you just might have got the train to Margate. And it's beautiful Margate that's the first stop on our tour of the great British coast today. Miss Murray Ford sings her popular song, All Aboard for Margate, the stirring record. <laughs> Let's be jolly with Maudie and Molly and all aboard, all aboard, from Margaret, then let's be gay, that's the place. 
Now the South Eastern Railway Company made it really convenient for people to travel up to Margate from London. So people would often arrive at the station in one of their trains before heading off to see the sites that Margate was famous for. Now many of the attractions that were popular last century are still attracting big crowds today, so let's go and have a look at some of them. Of course, one of the main attractions in Margate is its beautiful wide and sandy bay. And today you can walk down the spectacular steps from the promenade to the beach, have a look at the stunning views out to sea with all the seafood stalls nearby and take in the 200 year old pier called the Harbour Arm with its lighthouse at the end. Now you might also be able to hear the sounds of the arcade coming from the nearby Dreamlands Amusement Park. It was built in 1920, so it's now 100 years old and is celebrating its centenary this year. Oh, almost! Better luck next time! Now this park is home to the oldest roller coaster in the UK called the Scenic Railway. Have you ever been on a roller coaster? I used to love visiting the Pleasure Beach in Blackpool and went on lots of rides just like this one. So there are lots of things that seaside resorts in the UK have in common, no matter what part of the country they're in. Have a look at this short film and see if you can spot some common features of the British seaside holiday. Now remember you can pause the video at any time if you'd like to make a note of the things that you can see as we go along. different things from seaside holidays did you spot? Well we had Punch and Judy shows, eating delicious ice cream, riding on donkeys, building sand castles, eating fish and chips, there's nothing quite like it by the sea, swimming, a pier or jetty, amusement arcades, deck chairs and those wonderful colourful beach huts. So now, as we're still in Margate, I thought we could look at one of the newer additions to the beachfront here. It's an art gallery and it's positioned quite close to the harbour and it was built to acknowledge a famous British artist. Do you know who that might be? 
Now this artist first visited Margate as a child back in 1786 and he became a regular visitor there from the 1820s onwards. He's famous for his depiction of sunlight in his paintings, inspired by the way the light came in across the sea here. He apparently said that Margate had the loveliest skies in all of Europe. Here's a painting he did of Margate Jetty, which formed part of the sea view here until 1978. Who do you think this artist might be? Well, it's the British painter Joseph Mallard William Turner. He produced thousands of works of art in his lifetime and over 100 of these paintings featured Margate in them. Now, seaside towns nearly always specialise in entertainment and if you've ever visited Margate, you just might have been to see a show at the Winter Gardens. Now, this amazing complex of rooms is over 100 years old and it was constructed mainly below street level so as not to block out the sea view. Now, the main hall in the Winter Gardens has played host to many famous entertainers over the years. See if you can recognise any of these famous faces who played at the Winter Gardens. Well, we had the Beatles, who played there for six nights back in 1963, Laurel and Hardy, Vera Lynn, Chuck Berry and Status Quo. And the Winter Garden still puts on a real variety of shows to suit all tastes today. Now, something else you might notice when you're exploring the promenade in Margate is the Nayland Rock Shelter. It's a listed building because of its architectural style, but also because of its strong associations with the poet T.S. Eliot. Now, it's thought that he wrote part of his poem, The Wasteland, while sitting in this very shelter. It's considered to be one of the 20th century's most important poems, and it specifically mentions Margate Sands. On Margate Sands, I can connect nothing with nothing. The broken fingernails of dirty hands. My people, humble people, who expect nothing. Okay, well, we've been down to the beach, we've visited the amusement arcade, had a look to see what was on at the Winter Gardens, so I think it's nearly time to move on from Margate now. Perhaps in one of the steamers that used to be so popular here on the Kent coast. I wonder if you ever went on a steamboat. The waters by Margate used to be so busy with paddle steamers right up until 1967. So thank you for joining me in Margate today. Let's see where the boat will take us to next. So the next stop on our journey around Britain's coastline is in Cornwall. Have you ever visited Cornwall? Well, it's right on the southwest tip of the British Isles and it's famous for dramatic coastlines, beautiful beaches and its picturesque fishing villages. Now, there's a well-known poem that many of us might have learned when we were growing up and it mentions the Cornish town of St Ives. I wonder if you recognise it. Say it with me if you like. As I was going to St Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Each wife had seven sacks, each sack had seven cats, and each cat had seven kits. Kits, 
cats, sacks and wives, how many were there going to St Ives? So how many do you think were going to St Ives? Now you can pause the video here if you'd like to think about this for a bit longer. So how many were going to St Ives? Well, it's a bit of a riddle, this one, but the traditional answer is that only one person is going to St Ives and that everybody else is going in the opposite direction. Now, if everything mentioned in the poem was going to St Ives, apparently the total would come to 2,802. So well done if you managed to work that one out. I couldn't get there. Now, heading on from St Ives, if we travel a bit further up the coast, we come to the village of Port Isaac with its beautiful harbour. Now, Port Isaac has been a busy port and fishing village since the 14th century, and it's become internationally famous as the setting of the TV series Doc Martin, starring Martin Clunes. Now, Paul Dark was filmed here in the 1970s, and so were scenes from author Rosamund Pilcher's Shell Seekers. Now, over the years, lots of Britain's towns, villages and cities have undergone huge changes. So here we have a former resident of Port Isaac speaking in 1966 about some of the changes that he's witnessed. So what are the main themes that he's discussing here? You might like to write down some of the thoughts you have about this while you're listening to this clip. Um, the marketing of fish there has uh, changed, hasn't it? Oh yes, yes, good gracious me. Uh, uh, we used to catch herrings years ago. Uh, in fact, we landed, we landed a half a million of herrings in our little little port in one week. In fact, we broke the bank, and we used to get in them days eighteen pence, two shilling. If we had half a crown for a hundred and twenty-three fish, we were doing well. It for herrings, and uh, Poland was the only buyer. Uh, well, the main buyer, there was John Lee, he used to come down and buy, but he was a very small buyer, he only had about two or three boats. Poland was the main buyer, and he used to, he used to buy all that was caught and uh, do the best he could with it, I suppose, because money was very scarce at that time. And, of course, nets were cheap. You could get a net then for about uh, three pound five. Uh, the women used to make all the nets, but if you was at a smash shop and you had no more nets left, you had a send to Bridport for a net, that would be about £3.5. Today a net will cost you £30 or £35. And we used to carry in our boat 14, 15 nets. So it's a, it's a lot to lay out for a fleet of nets today. And most of the nets are gone. There is one or two have tried for errands, but they've only caught, I think there was a small boat, at about 800 this winter. That's the most fish was caught this winter on. The errands are all gone. That the boats are gone, the big boats are sold, they're gone, the nets is gone, and the men haven't took it off. They, instead of uh, errand fishing today, everybody that's fishing is making crab pots with wire. So this resident of Port Isaac was talking about how much the local fishing trade had changed over the years. Herring fishing used to be big business there, but the number of fish caught had dropped from over 1 million fish in a week down to only 800 in a whole season. He was speaking about how the methods of catching fish had changed, with fewer people using boats and nets and crab pots becoming much more common. What were the main types of occupation in your hometown when you were growing up? Did you see a lot of changes in the type of work that was being done there over the years? There have been so many changes in the workplace in Britain over the last 50 years, with many more women in the workplace now, fewer jobs in manufacturing and more people than ever working in the public sector. OK, well, it's time to leave Port Isaac and Cornwall behind us for now as we continue our journey and head north for sailing up and around the Welsh coast. Can you hear the calls of these birds? Well, these birds are called storm petrels. They follow boats out onto the sea for shelter and to scavenge food from them. 
Now, storm petrels are associated with lots of local myths and legends about the sea, including one regarding a sea witch called Mother Carey. Now, according to legend, she was feared by sailors as it was thought that she could bring about terrifying and dangerous storms. Let's head on into calmer waters. So now we've reached our final stop on our journey around the coast of Great Britain. So first we took the train to Margate and experienced all the seaside attractions there. Then we sailed to St Ives and visited the fishing village of Port Isaac in Cornwall. And now we're here, right up in the northwest of the UK in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. So let's stay here for a while, listen to the sounds of the sea, watch the water and relax. You might be able to hear the sounds of some seals in the water. The seals that you can hear were from Donna Nook Nature Reserve in Lincolnshire, but you can find these lovely animals in many other parts of Britain, including the Hebridean islands of Uist. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session and a huge thank you once again to the British Library for providing us with the wonderful audio clips that you heard in this film. Now the sounds that were used in this video are part of the British Library's Unlocking Our Sound Heritage project and that aims to make sound collections more widely accessible to people. So if you'd like to explore more sounds that the British Library holds, you can visit the link that you see here. Now at Care Visions, it's really important to us to keep on improving and to find out how we can provide a better experience for all of you. So we'd really appreciate it if you could please take a couple of minutes to give us some feedback through our feedback survey. And you can find the link for this in the comments box below. Now we'll be uploading new sessions on a regular basis. So please do keep checking our website for the latest information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So we look forward to connecting with you again next time. Do take care and stay safe.